Shalom, Mubarakah, Mishpaka, peace and blessings, family. In this video, we're going to be talking about something very important, something called the fingerprint of Yah. This is the mathematical sequence that Yah used to create everything in the universe, everything composed of, of atoms, everything composed of energy, um, basically living and non-living things. He uses math to make it. All right, I'm going to show you. I'm going to literally show you. Um, this is what you call the Fibonacci sequence or I would like to call it the fingerprint of Yah, right? The fingerprint of Yah. Why do I call it the fingerprint of Yah? Because if you look at your fingerprint, you're gonna see this same exact mathematical sequence. You're gonna see something like this also. You'll see clearly that it also contains this same mathematical sequence. You see, it's a, you know, a shell. It contains the same mathematical sequence in it. We're gonna be talking about two sequences. We're gonna be talking about the Fibonacci sequence. You know, there was this white man named Fibonacci, right? And they say he invented the Fibonacci sequence. But no, he actually learned that from black um, Arabs who were our brothers. And they learned that from their ancestors who, they, who learned from Abraham, who was also our father. Because we know what about Abraham? He is, he was a master mathematician. He knew all about math because Yah himself was so near to Abraham that Yah revealed all kinds of things to Abraham beyond our imaginations. But this is something uh, peculiar. Here is the fingerprint of Yah. Here's the sequence. 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34. And it keeps going on into infinity. It never stops. Um, 1 plus 1 and 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. 13 plus 8 is 21. 21 plus 13 is 34. And like I said, it goes on into infinity. All you're doing is adding uh, the last two numbers together to produce the next number. And the next free, the next sequence I'm also going to talk about is the cellular division um, sequence. Cellular division sequence can only be found in life, living things that multiply, not in all kinds of inanimate objects. However, the fingerprint of Yah can be found in everything from a rock to a piece of water to a human being to a bear. It doesn't matter. It's going to be found everywhere. Now, let's see the math behind this. We have right here is a one inch by one inch square. Next to it is a two inch by two inch square. Now, we want to make these two equal, so I'm going to add another one by one inch square to the side of it. Now we have a complete shape, closed in shape. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a three by three inch square next to it somewhere. Obviously they're they're equal if you, you know, this is one, this is two, obviously gonna equal three. So now what we're gonna do is make a five by five inch square. We're gonna do it on the side. The fingerprint of Yah is what happens when you combine art and mathematics into one beautiful thing. And that's what creation is. That's what Yah's creation is. Yah's creation is so phenomenal because it's a mixture between left brain, what we get, what, what us homo sapiens would consider left brain and right brain activities. He combines them into one to create such a, a, a perfect uh, balanced creation. If I were to take these three lines, all right, show you something cool. We have a Fibonacci spiral. Now I will erase this box that I put in the wrong spot on accident. And as you can see, boom, you got the fingerprint of Yah. This can be found everywhere in all life in all non-life in everything composed of atoms guys every single thing has this spiral
soon as the external electron charge decreases, the helix becomes stretched under the influence of the internal potential, and the electron goes into the wave state. When the external charge reappears, which is formed due to an interaction of waves with matter, the helix compresses, and the electron goes into particle state again. In the particle state, the electron has a negative external charge and a left-handed helix. And in the wave state, it has a right-handed helix and a positive external charge. This same spiral is found in everything. You know what I'm saying? And that's all about, I'm teaching you about y'all right now. <laughs> I don't necessarily need scriptures to read to you guys to teach you about y'all. I'm telling you some, something about everything in creation. Take a good look because I'm going to erase it. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the cellular division sequence. Really cool. It starts off with one cell in the body. And then it makes two cells. And each cell breaks. And they just keep going. I don't want to keep going. <laughs> but everything doubles, right? Everything doubles in the cellular division sequence. So the cellular division sequence is one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, etc. It keeps going. Everything just doubles. But they're both missing seven. They're both missing seven. So why would y'all's two sequences both miss his favorite number? We know that y'all's favorite number is seven. If you don't, you know, if you haven't noticed that, you probably haven't been reading scripture. So, so what's the deal with the number seven? Why is seven so holy to y'all? Well, you got to understand first thing first. The two sequences of physical matter, which are the Fibonacci sequence and the cellular division sequence. Fibonacci sequence covers both life and non-living materials. And the cellular division sequence is just living materials, everything composed of cells. Um, if you look at those two sequences, you'll see that seven it does not exist in either one. Meaning that seven does not exist within physical matter. It, it, when it comes to the continuum, it can only be found in space and time. Space and time is the only time seven can be found. Time, right? It connects to the physical. For example, it takes you seven years for all the cells in your body to replace themselves, right? Or the seven energy centers you have within your body. These are just energy. It's not, it's not cells. It's not uh, any actual matter. It's energy. You have seven um, energy systems associated with the body. You have six in the body. You have one sitting upon the head. Um, in the rainbow, rainbow is just a figment of light. So it's like kind of space. It's not really matter. Um, in rainbow, you have seven colors. The atmosphere, which is space, seven layers. 
which you know corresponds with the book of enoch saying there are seven heavens now actually i could go on and on about seven and how we can find it in space and how we can find it in time but whenever we're looking in matter the only time you can find seven occurring naturally in matter is when we're looking at the atomic level and when we're dealing with the atomic level we're actually dealing with space we're not really actually dealing with the matter itself because we're, let's look at the nitrogen atom for example nitrogen has seven protons seven neutrons and seven electrons therefore nitrogen is like a therefore nitrogen is like a holy um atom it's a holy element and that makes sense because most of the air that we breathe is 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 literally you know nitrogen 78 percent of the air that's in your lungs right now is nitrogen 78 percent of all the air in the atmosphere is nitrogen small percent carbon dioxide and then there's another percentage of oxygen and then there's 78 percent nitrogen so most of the stuff we breathe is nitrogen the second largest element we can find in our air is oxygen oxygen has eight protons eight neutrons and eight electrons and seven and eight are both numbers of cleansing purification and sanctification in scripture this num this number stuff is deep the simple air that we breathe nitrogen and oxygen right these are no these this is holy the air that we breathe is literally holy because it contains seven electrons neutrons and protons as well as eight neutrons eight electrons and eight protons like come on guys this is this is this is deep this is deep knowledge this is the knowledge that we we ain't had in thousands of years and it's finally coming up it's probably coming back to the surface now we know about this stuff for thousands of years that's why you can find the fibonacci sequence on cave art and rock art all around the world we've known about this stuff for years man seriously we've known about the atoms we had microscopes they had my abraham and his people, they had microscopes. They was able to look at cells and stuff. How do I know? Look at the Hebrew alphabet. There's one letter in Hebrew alphabet that, that means life and is represented by a sperm cell. How did they know that? How would they know that back in, back in the ancient time? They had microscopes. During the time of Nimrod especially, the Earth's advanced technology was extreme, right? Who says I'm gonna build a tower to heaven? Nobody's gonna actually think I'm gonna build a tower to heaven unless they actually know the math to do it. Don't you know that scholars and stuff are still spooked and shocked at just them being able to make pyramids? Because they're like, you have to get the mathematic formula perfect to make a pyramid. You have to get the formulas perfect. You gotta know, you gotta know the Pythagorean theorem. You gotta know uh, all kinds of trigonometry and stuff. You gotta know all kinds of ge geometry to be able to have the proper uh, uh, to have the proper equation and the pro proper sequence to be able to stack bricks upon each other and not put anyone on the wrong spot. Because if you mess up and put one too close to the other side, you messed up and you gotta start all over. They have to have the perfect mathematical formula to build a pyramid, let alone, let alone a, a literal tower to the heavens. In order for Nimrod to be able to calculate the formula to build a tower to the heavens he must first know the distance between the earth and the top of the heavens he must first know that because from that he will be able to know how wide to make the tower so, so nimrod had to have been able to know the exact distance from the earth to the heavens which means he had advanced technology and he also summoned the fallen back to the earth to help him know this stuff Nimrod is the one who summoned the fallen angels back to the earth so he can actually figure this stuff out. That's why the fallen angels came back to earth after the flood and had sex with women again. That's why you had giants after the flood. But that's besides the point. What I'm telling you is they had advanced technology in scripture times. And let me tell you how you look at just look at the Levitical breastplate. One of the stones in the Levitical breastplate is diamond. Diamond. The only way you can cut diamond is with, with laser precision. <laughs> How did they cut the diamond, first of all, to put it in the plate? Then, look, it gets, it gets deeper. They had to carve the name of a tribe in their diamond. 
Like I said, laser precision technology is the only thing that you can use to actually cut a, a diamond to that precision, to that detail. And then we can, you know, we can look at all kinds of things that you can find in, in all around the world that just shows you that they had advanced technology in those times. The stuff that we have today, these phones and this computer, that's this is baby stuff. When y'all this when y'all broke up the earth and divided the continents, we lost all that information because we couldn't communicate like normally anymore. Our languages our languages were confounded. When you can't communicate no more, you all your equations, all your formulas, you can't communicate it to each other no more. You lost it. So the earth went into a primitive state. When y'all divided the earth and separated the nations and confounded the languages, that's when mankind first went into a primitive state and we've been going up from there. But guess what? Who Guess who still retained their language? The bloodline of Shem. And that's why Abraham was amongst the smartest men. Seven is a number that cannot be found neither in um, the sequences of living matter or non-living matter. It's... That means seven is not a physical number, guys. This is what I'm trying to get at. It's a number of energy. It represents the spiritual realm. And the only place that are overlaps to the physical realm is space and time. And time is not even really physical. Time is like when you have the spiritual realm and you have the physical realm, time will be right in between them. And then when you get into this physical realm, then you have space. And then you get to the bottom, that's matter. And matter is all physical. So in the, in the spiritual realm, we have stuff we don't even know about. Other than matter and other than space. And other, they don't operate in the physical realm. They don't operate in space, time, and matter. That's why Yah himself can shrink to however small he wants. And he can grow to however big he wants. It's, it says in our book that even the heavens cannot contain Yah. How can he fit in the in the tabernacle how does that work they didn't even know but let me tell you how because y'all is not y'all y'all doesn't care about space he can be he can be as big as he want he can be as small as he want he exists in the spiritual realm that's why whenever the, the angels came down to have sex with women their babies were big as hell because their babies were part flesh meaning they can't just be however big they want but they're also part angel so so what that does is it messes with the DNA to the point where they just kept growing. It just, they just kept growing. You know, it, it, it had to meet in the middle. If you look at the, if you go, if you get a microscope and look at like small stuff, it has still got so much detail on it. Like look at the, you can look at the feet of insects and under a microscope, just small stuff. It's so much detail in everything in creation. Now even looking big things like stars and all this other stuff. Look at the moon. Look at look at the continents. Everything on Earth. There's so much detail in the mountains and the volcanoes and the water and any fish. The largest of, of beasts in the Earth. The smallest of beasts in the Earth. The creeping thing. The flying insect that flies above the Earth. Everything has extreme amount of detail in it. Why is this? This is because y'all can shrink and just he takes a little paintbrush and just, or he can grow and just make big things. Like I'm telling you guys, this is what it is. That's why he that's why when you take the Ark of the Covenant into the into the midst of the field and you about to fight the war and you touch that Ark of the Covenant, you die. Because why? Because Yah is in the Yah is literally in the Ark of the Covenant. He can he can put himself in the Ark and, and give the people much power. That's how that's how Yah went before us in, in battle. He can fit in the Ark of the Covenant, he can fit in the tabernacle, he can fit in the heavens, he can even be bigger than the heavens. Because you got to understand, the things in the spiritual realm can do that because they're not limited by space. There's no space in the spiritual realm. You got to understand this. It's levels to this stuff, man. Now let's look at the uh, flower of life. Flower of life. The flower of life, as you can see from right here, it can be found in... It can be even found in things that are not living sometimes, but it's mostly found in life. Now I'm not gonna draw the flower of life. That's, that's you know that'll take too much time. But look at the flower of life on the screen. The flower of life is what unifies the Fibonacci sequence and the cellular division sequence. Because you can take the flower of life and put a Fibonacci sequence through it, 
but you can also use the, the flower of life to see basic um, sacred geometry that Yahuwah of hosts used to create everything in existence. Now let's look at the analemma of the sun in the sky. It matches a part of the flower of life. Let's look at your eyes. Your eyes, the shape that they're in, part of flower of life. What is this? Somebody said in my YouTube comment that this is an evil symbol. Somebody said that's an evil symbol. How is it an evil symbol? It's the star of Ram Fan. Does that look like a star? Is that, does this look like a star? Is that a star? Why can we find this in every culture around the world? What is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't think this is evil. So you got six. Six doing what they doing, right? And then you got the seven ones set apart. What does that remind you of, man? Right? What's this? Hope y'all, I hope y'all can see that. Damn. That's a menorah. Or at least I try to make the menorah. You got six on the side. Three, you got six branches. And you got one candlestick. So what does that mean? You got one candlestick. You got six branches. You got six. And then the seven is set apart. Ain't that the same thing? In a different form? Let me show you something. Show you something. Everybody think that's Hinduism. There ain't no Hinduism. Everybody know about chakras. This was something that they knew about all around the world. This was common knowledge. What I'm telling you guys, this was common knowledge and it's common knowledge today still. This ain't no pagan shit. This is real. You have seven energy systems. You got seven energy points around the body, six in the body, and the seventh is set apart above the head. See how it glows? See how that shines? That's real. It's set apart. You have six in the body. This is how the energy moves through your body. Along, along the, the spinal cord, vertebrae, brain, and glandular system, also known as the endocrine system, you have extreme pieces of energy in the body. This is a scientific fact. I can prove it to you right now, but I'm not about to. I'm just trying to tell you guys this so you can, you can see the power of numbers. All right? So, what we have right here is the pineal gland as well as the pituitary gland. Coming down here, this is the thyroid and parathyroid gland. Right on the heart, we got the heart and we got the thymus gland. You got the pancreas is right here. Then right here, we got, I believe, uh, I don't remember which gland that is. And obviously your reproductive glands are right here. Uh, so these are the glands of the body and right behind each gland is a, is a spinal cord and brain. But there's no gland up here, but it's just your body spewing out so much energy above the head. See, you gotta, guys gotta understand, the head absorbs energy and it shoots out energy. That's why when y'all, when think about Moses putting his hand on Joshua's head and, and literally Moses' spear goes into Joshua. How does it happen? Because this is an extreme energy absorber center. Extreme. That's why I don't let people touch my hair. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you touch somebody right here, you're putting a lot of energy on them. As well as down here. You got you got you have to understand how the energy moves through through the body. There is the electromagnetic field that 
comes through the body, right? It comes out, it goes in. It comes out, it goes in. You know what I'm saying? When you touch somebody down here, there's an extreme amount of energy being absorbed. Why you think, what's right here? What's right here that I just circled? That's the hollow of the thigh, also known as the, the sinew of the thigh. Why did, why did the angel touch Jacob right there? He just absorbed a lot of energy. That was his blessing. Now, what do you think a halo is? Why do you think they have these halos behind their head and them, and them old paintings? Because when people knew what that stuff was, man, this is common knowledge. They just don't teach you in school, so you don't think it's... That's the thing. <laughs> That's why people think this stuff fake. They think this stuff fake because they don't teach it in school. And they think it's they think it's new age stuff because it wasn't taught in school. They knew about this in the 1500s. They knew about it. This, this wasn't even stuff that was... This wasn't even stuff that was forgot about when, when the continents divided. People still knew about this. This is basic knowledge. This is basic human anatomy. But any doctor can tell you there's an extreme amount of energy in the body, right? Along this, right along this axis. They know that. Everybody knows that. Just feel it. There's more heat. <laughs> there's more heat along this area. Oh, you teaching chakras. You, you, you want, you, you want some witchcraft. Not how is it witchcraft? This is basic biology. We failed to realize that there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. In the ancient Hebrew, that is the Paleo Hebrew, right? They knew this stuff, man. They knew this. I'm telling you guys, seven is a more important number than what you think. 22 letters in the, in the Paleo Hebrew alphabet. You got seven, which is a holy number. Divide that. What's the answer? Three point one four. Pi. Now. What do we know about pi? It's the it's the key to understanding the formula of any circle. Whether you look, you're trying to find the circumference of a circle or the radius or diameter of a circle, you need to understand pi. It's just basic math. So our ancestors knew about this stuff, man. Seven inches. Seven inches. This is my hand in the shape of a seven. Boom. So this is my root chakra. Seven inches from my root chakra is gonna bring me directly to my sacral. All right. And then from there, they're gonna bring me directly to my solar plexus. From there, it's gonna bring me directly to my heart chakra. From there, it's gonna take me direct to my throat shop. Then it's gonna take me directly to my third eye, which is my uh, brow chakra. And then it's gonna take me directly to where you can find the exact point. This is the exact point of the, of the set apart energy that's above my head. 